The growth form of Parvankarina is unusual for an arthropod and its apparent sessile mode of life appears to rebut an arthropod affinity. The living Parvankarinas typically lived with their heads parallel to the current direction. Many of Burgessia fossils have been found. 1383 specimens are known from the Greater Philopod bed in Canada, where they comprise 2.6% of the community. Sorotrocircus was a creature that swam freely on its back, moving perhaps through movements of the gills and the action of its long tail tuft. It had a head shield followed by a body of nine segments and a caudal tip featuring a series of spines on the end. The biota of the Burgess Shale appears to be typical of Middle Cambrian deposits. Although the hard part bearing organisms make up as little as 14% of the community, these same organisms are found in similar proportions in other Cambrian localities. This means that there is no reason to assume that the organisms without hard parts are exceptional in any way, indeed, many appear in other lagerstaten of different age and locations. Maoshanshan shales in China is believed to have been a shallow sea with a muddy bottom. The preserved fauna is primarily benthic and was likely buried by periodic turbidity currents, since most fossils do not show evidence of post-mortem transport. Like the younger Burgess shale fossils, the paleo-environment enabled preservation of non-mineralized, soft body parts. The body of Wingertschelicus consists of just two main parts, a head and a trunk that comprises a long row of similar segments. The relatively small head is dominated by large eyes, and three pairs of long legs, making it look like a damselfly nymph. Euthy Carcinoidea was an enigmatic group of possibly amphibious arthropods that ranged from Cambrian to Triassic times. Their fossils have been found in marine, brackish, and freshwater deposits. Due to its particular combination of characteristics, the position of the Euthy Carcinoidea within the arthropoda has been ambiguous. Previous authors have allied Euthy Carcinoids with crustaceans. However, the general features and the discovery of fossils from this group in Cambrian rocks suggest that its may have given rise to the mandibulates, the group that includes the myriapods. The preabdomen consisted of 5 to 14 tergites, each having up to 3 somites. Each somite had in turn a pair of uniramus, segmented legs. Marella is thought to have been a benthic marine scavenger living on detrital and particulate material. One exceptional specimen shows the organism fossilized in the act of molting. The identification of a diffraction grating pattern on well-preserved specimens proves that it would have harbored an iridescent sheen, and thus would have appeared colorful. Like mime taster, these animals probably lived in small groups. Since appendages and other body parts are unknown, no firm conclusions can be made of the biology of furca. However, comparisons to other marillomorphs and living arthropods such as horseshoe crabs suggest a benthic marine lifestyle. Saparian lived during the early part of the Cambrian period, and may be the most basal form of later trilobites. Like all Agnostida, Acatagnostis is diminutive, with the head shield and tail shield of approximately the same size and outline. It has a round cephalon without spines. The cephalic border is narrow, while the border furrow is wide.
Red lichia has a rather flat and thinly calcified dorsal exoskeleton of inverted egg-shaped outline, measured across the base of the genal spines and disregarding the spine on the 11th segment of the articulated middle part of the body. Like in many early trilobites, the thorax of paradoxides consists of so-called nonfulcrate segments, that allow the animal to roll, providing protection from front, rear, top, and bottom, while leaving access to the soft ventral side of the animal from each of the sides. The eye ridges of the bristolia spring from the back of the frontal lobe of the central area of the cephalon, that is called glabella. Pichella is unique in having short, wide, strongly inflated genal spines, with broadly rounded tips. The cephalon is semicircular in outline with short, strongly inflated rounded spines. Kleptothuli cephalon is composed of at least five segments, and its elongated thorax is composed of 27 segments. This genus is the only known long trilobite. Elrathia is a medium-sized trilobite with a smooth sub-ovate carapace that is tapered towards the rear. Thorax is usually 13 segments. After hatching, probably from eggs a few tenths of a millimeter, the small protaspid and early merispid stages supposedly lived between the plankton in the water column. Pyrite preservation has given scientists a rare opportunity to examine the gills, walking legs, antennae and digestive systems of trilobites, which are rarely preserved. Triarthrus is therefore commonly used in science texts to illustrate trilobite anatomy and physiology. The foremost pair of extremities in trilobites are the antennas and are probably flexible. Many odontoplorids have long spines that are derived either from the margins of the exoskeleton, or from granular or tubercular ornamentation. They are so spinose so as to be described as having spines on spines. It is speculated that such tremendous spines of the Dicronorus hampered the ability of predators, such as arthrodeer placoderms, to attack them, as well as to help prevent them from sinking into the soft mud of their environment. Asaphids comprise some 20% of described fossil trilobites. Heads are often flat, and carapace furrows in the head area are often faint or not visible. They also generally have a wide doublure, or rim, that surrounds the cephalon. This causes some specimens to be described as having a characteristic snowplow-shaped cephalon. When present, eyes are typically large. Eyes holocrole, commonly more or less conical, short or moderate in length. In some evolution lines, the visual surface of the eye is raised on a stalk. One thought is that a saphis trilobite may have lain in wait for prey buried in the bottom sediment with only its periscope eye stalks protruding. The major extinction event marking the end of the Ordovician period reduced the diversity of all trilobite orders with most asaphid families disappearing. Symphysops has features typically associated with a pelagic lifestyle, among which very large eyes, compact thorax and indications of strong musculature. In some later cyclopigids, progressive enlargement resulted in the anterior fusion of their eyes. Given the weight of the dorsal exoskeleton, it is likely cyclopigids swam upside down, not unlike some extant crustaceans with pelagic lifestyles. Harpetid trilobites are characterized among trilobites by bearing a comparatively large, semicircular brim around the cephalon which is often perforated by small pores. This brim is thought to serve as a filter feeding apparatus. There are specimens known of phacops with many irregular black spots, it may be assumed that they are original and not caused by the fossilization process. The spots are irregular and have spurs branching outwardly, similar to the melanophores in many extant animals. 
It is quite conceivable that changing the size of the melanophores enabled phacops to camouflage itself in different environments. The development of schizocrole eyes in phacopid trilobites is an example of post-displacement pedomorphosis. The eyes of immature holocrole cambrian trilobites were basically miniature schizocrole eyes. In phacopida, these were retained via delayed growth of these immature structures into the adult form. The eyebrow-like palpebral lobe of the urbanachile extends laterally over the visual surface of the eyes, shading the eye against the sun. In Wallacerops, the function of the trident itself is poorly understood. With the amount of energy and nutrients expended in growing such a large adornment its function was clearly important. Although a number of suggestions have been made, the most satisfactory current explanation is that the trident served as horns similar to those of present-day beetles. Olenoids followed the basic structure of all trilobites, its major characteristics are a large parallel-sided glabella, deep interpleural furrows on the pygidium, and slender pygidial spines, as well as the fact that it is the most common limb-bearing trilobite species in the Burgess Shale. The rounded smooth shape of Boomistis, as well as the almost complete effacement of its cephalon, is believed to have been an adaptation for burrowing. The presence of well-developed eyes also suggest that it may have kept them above the substrate by burrowing into sediments backward. It was probably either detritivorous, feeding on decomposing organic material drifting down in the currents, or carnivorous. Boomistus could also curl up into a ball-like shape. This is believed to indicate that its habitat might have been the shallow waters of the littoral zone. Teratasbus, like many other trilobites, was presumed to have been a detritivore that was also an opportunistic predator, preying on small burrowing animals. Proedida was the last order of trilobite to go extinct, finally dying out in the Permian extinction. 